Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture 19. Uh, uh, today we will start uh, with a new topic, uh, Kepler's equation or uh, Kepler's problem which we are going to discuss. So, orbit determination we have already done. So, uh, the basic uh, problem while you try to do the orbit determination, you have to propagate the orbit also. I, it appears as one of the requirement. Say, if you, right now you know the uh, position and velocity vector of the satellite. So, what will be the position and velocity vector of the satellite in the future or maybe it is a radius vector and uh, uh, this the true anomaly. Okay. So, uh, this problem it falls under this category. So, uh, orbit determination is one problem, another one we have the orbit propagation. So, here basically we are going to deal with orbit propagation, but a simpler one. We have more sophisticated one and uh, which model uh, in which we take into account the effects of all the planetary system, even the sun and everything is included in that. Okay. And uh, see for that I am talking about the satellite or satellite. So, effect of the sun and other planetary system, moon, all these will be included and then the it is propagated numerically. So, that is another issue which we will not discuss in this course because it is not only beyond the scope, we, that much of time we do not have for this course. So, uh, we will confine ourselves to the two body system in which with respect to another body we are describing the um, system equation and uh, or the uh, uh, how the satellite or the planet will move with respect to the uh, other one. So, in that context how the true anomaly and uh, uh, it is a radius vector or the radius vector and uh, velocity vector it uh, evolves with time. So, uh, that is the topic for today. So, we have in the orbit problem, we can broadly divide into three categories. determination of orbital elements which we have already done, elements or orbital parameters given r 0 v 0 at t 0. So, this is one of the problem it is already done. Okay. So, the second problem is inverse of the above problem. So, inverse of the ever problem that is given orbital parameters find R V at T. And the third problem, so this also we have already done, that the third problem is given R 0 V 0 at T 0 find R V at T. So, this is the problem we are going to discuss in this lecture okay. and this we typically, typically call as the uh, Kepler's problem. Okay. So, 
So, this is typically, uh, typically called this is Kepler's problem. So, Kepler's problem especially it is described in context of r and theta that you find the r and theta or the ephemeris. There was many times you will see that you are interested only in the location of the satellite. So, where it is located in the sky or uh, in the because the Kepler dealt with planets. So, in that case where the planet or the moon all they are located. So, that refers to it, uh, your theta. So, if the ephemeris uh, we are especially talking about. So, in that case it is uh, referring to r theta ephemeris. Okay, so, the Kepler's problem can be tackled using the following methods. So, here we have Kepler's problem and this can be dealt using say we are doing for the simple case. So, solving r double dot equal to minus mu by r cube r and numerically. So, this is one of the way uh, in the case you have uh, more uh, uh, you are considering the effect of other planets. So, you will have the perturbation term which will be present here in this case. So, uh, once we go to the three body problem. So, at that time we will take into account all those things. The second way is to find the orbital elements at time t 0 and propagate theta in time. Means, this implies that get theta 0 and then point theta at t. So, in the future you are going to do this. So, this can be done this part can be done both analytically and numerically. So, we are going to discuss this part the energy analytical way of doing this and once we do this. So, that particularly we call as the Kepler's equation. Okay, so, shortly we will write the Kepler's equation, we will derive it. So, Kepler's equation it appears as the m equal to e minus e sin e, where m this is called the true anomaly this is called true anomaly this one is called the eccentric anomaly. And as you know, this E is eccentricity. Uh, 
Okay. So, for the steps to be carried out, it is a very straightforward. Finding the future position of the satellite so we start with say if we have the uh, equation r square theta dot this equal to h for two body problem it appears as a one body problem only thing that the mu which appears the that mu gets modified as m 1 plus m 2 times g. Okay. Otherwise, it is similar to the one body problem we have taken right in the beginning. So, from this place we can write d theta by d t equal to h by r square and from here we can see that d t will be equal to d theta r square divided by h and integrate it from say uh, t 0 to t and here theta equal to theta 0 to theta. Okay. So, once we solve this problem our job is done. So, for doing this we will utilize uh, all the developments we have done earlier. So, say here in this case the left hand side we can write this as t minus t 0 and the right hand side as we know this is r equal to l y 1 plus e cos theta this will be whole square. Okay. and uh, 1 by h of course, this will come outside theta equal to 0 to theta d theta. d theta divided by 1 plus e cos theta whole square. So, this is the basic equation for propagating theta. Now, we have multiple cases here once e equal to 0 you know this is simply circle and uh, and it is a trivial problem. because here in this case he gets this term gets reduced to 0 we get 1 and it is simply integrating it there is nothing much in that. Okay. The second case is so this is the first case the second case is of that of say the parabola e equal to 1. In that case t minus t 0 that gets reduced to L square divided by h d theta 1 plus cos theta whole square. Okay. Now, d theta by 1 plus e 1 plus cos theta because e equal to 1. So, we have directly written 1 plus cos theta. So, we can write here 2 cos theta divided by 2 whole square.
So, here in the case of the parabola, uh, this is also little simpler to work with, but once it goes to the ellipse, in that case, because of the presence of E, the whole thing gets complicated and then we need to apply a special method to treat all these things. So, one step we will write more and we will try to reduce this in terms of uh, uh, say uh, L we will remove in terms of this L square by H is there. So, we will remove and make it uh, uh, in terms of H right now or uh, we can carry also uh, let us forget about this we will carry and later on we will treat it. Okay, so, T minus T 0 L square divided by 4 H. Okay. Now, sec square theta we uh, sec to the power 4 theta we know we can write this as sec square theta by 2 times sec square theta by 2 d theta, theta equal to 0 to theta and then uh, in the next step we have L square by 4 h theta equal to 0 to theta this we write as 1 plus 10 square theta by 2 times sec square theta by 2 d theta. Okay, and then we integrate this part by breaking it one more step we will have to write. These are the standard technique of doing any problem. Okay, so, therefore, T minus T 0, the first term it can be written as this is simply tan theta by 2 and the second term now for that here theta by 2 is there. So, we have to take care of the 2 also if it is only theta then it is a straight forward but uh, here 2 is there and therefore, we account for that also. Okay. So, if we differentiate this, so we can see that this differentiation will be sec square theta by 2 times 1 by 2. So, that means, we have to put here a 2 to get to this sec square theta by 2 value. So, as we differentiate this, so 1 by 2 will appear and this will uh, be cancelled by this 2 and therefore, we get this quantity. And similarly for the this part, so we can see this is a result of 10 to the power q theta by 2. Okay. So, once we differentiate this quantity, so this will appear as three. 10 square theta by 2, this is the first thing. Okay. We, we are differentiating first the 10 uh, to the power q theta by 2 and therefore, thereafter we differentiate for 10. So, that becomes sec square theta by 2 and then 1 by 2 especially it appears. So, uh, this is the situation and here it is a uh, given only 10 square theta by 2. So, that means that we should multiply here by 2 by 3 to uh, eliminate all these terms and finally, we put here theta equal to 0 to theta as the integration limit. So, uh, this is the way we do this problem in the case in the case theta 0 equal to 0 means you are measuring the position from the uh, periapsis. So, in that case T minus T 0 okay, that gets reduced to 2 tan theta by 2 plus 
here in this case also 2 by 3 10 to the power q theta by 2. So, th this is only for the case where uh, you have theta e 0 equal to 0 otherwise it is not otherwise we have to take into account for this factor also. Okay, uh, now, so therefore, uh, and then we have this term also we here we are missing other term L square by 4h you see L square by 4h. So, L square divided by 4h and we know that h square equal to mu times L. So, L then becomes h square divided by mu and L square this is h square by h to the power 4 by mu square and this implies L square by h equal to h q by mu square. So, we can insert there and uh, that becomes our final result. So, this quantity then gets reduced to h q by 4 mu square times all these terms in the bracket which is uh, 2 tan theta by 2 and uh, plus 2 by 3 10 to the power q theta by 2. So, this way we have been able to very simply solve uh, this uh, for the parabola. So, we will do it for the uh, parabola and then we will do it for the ellipse and also for hyperbola. Okay, case 2, case, uh, case 3 already we have done for the circle which was trivial uh, there is nothing to do in that uh, and then uh, the other one uh, we have done the parabola now this is an ellipse. Ellipse is the case when E lies between 0 and 1, it lies between 0 and 1. So, in this case what will be the result. Okay. So, following the same procedure we have written this as uh, r square by h d theta square by h d theta Now, here in this case problem will be because of the presence of 1 plus e cos theta r equal to L by 1 plus e cos theta. So, once you insert here in this place, so because of presence of this e the integration gets complicated. Okay. So, for solving this problem of uh, what we call the uh, we change the variable so that this gets into a simpler format. So, what do we do here that say this is a circle and inside this circle an ellipse is described. and somewhere the focus is located here. Okay. This part we call as the auxiliary uh, or auxiliary circle uh, or we simply we can call as the uh, 
circumscribing circle which is uh, bonding this uh, ellipse and then we have the radius vector here so if we extend this to this place so th this goes and touches the circle here in this place somewhere this point is your center okay and this point we call this as the focus this is center and the focus here on this side we have the half of this is semi major axis the quantity from here to here as per our conic section discussion this is ae and this quantity from here to here this is a times 1 minus e because that is the way we write rp equal to l by 1 plus e cos theta and r for that the theta becomes equal to 0 so this is 0 degree and therefore this is l by 1 plus e and l is nothing but a times 1 minus e square so this divided by 1 plus e this gets it to 1 minus e so here in this case we drop a perpendicular from this point to this point and then extend this beyond this line to this place and let us say that this point we call as the p and this point we call as m the uh, this angle we so as theta which is the true anomaly and here the point on the bottom we call as the n if we join the center of this ellipse and point p then this angle which we saw here this is called e so e is called eccentric anomaly and uh, theta this we are is calling as true anomaly this is theta so what we have done that this point on the ellipse we have extended vertically which cuts the circle here in this point at p so this radius of the circle will be a because this length is a from here to here this length is a and therefore this also becomes a as a, this is touching the this becomes the center of the circle and center of the ellipse also now we use a property for the this uh, auxiliary circle and the ellipse which we write as p n divided by m n this equal to p n a by b a by b this is the special property of this uh, circumscribing circle it bears this ratio this point here this point here and this point here okay so th this length and this length they bear this ratio pn by mn equal to a by b okay and this will help us solving this problem so pn will also be equal to a sin e while the quantity this is your r that shown by the orange line from this place to this place this is r the angle is theta here okay 
So, m n this equal to r sin theta. Similarly, f n will be r cos theta. Okay, so, using this uh, these details we will be able to uh, work out will be able to replace this theta in terms of e. We do not want to work with this theta because once we are working with this theta, so e is appearing. So, our objective is to eliminate this e and in that context we have in uh, this uh, introduce another variable or in calling this as the eccentric anomaly. So, the true anomaly and eccentric anomaly both are physical quantities physical quantities. While earlier I have told you the mean anomaly, mean anomaly is a purely mathematical quantity. We cannot show that in the picture while the true anomaly and the eccentric anomaly we can show it like this, this one and this one. Okay. So, mean anomaly this is purely uh, mathematical quantity. Okay, so, with this description now uh, we proceed further. So, already we have written on the previous page we have written uh, okay, uh, the name we will change it uh, we will do little modification here we will write this as p and uh, I have used this notation. So, I will write here as m. So, uh, this is m, this is p and n. So, therefore, the ratio is the same only thing the notation I am changing here nothing else. So, m n by p n this is equal to a by b it is it is the same thing only thing the uh, symbols I have changed. So, the, therefore, I will change here in this place also m n will be a sin e m n is quantity from this place to this place and p n will write as r sin theta and rest other things are the same way. Okay, so, if, uh, this way we have m n by p n this equal to m n by p n this equal to a by b. a by b. Now, we solve this. So, m n we have written as a sin e therefore, a sin e and p n we have written as r sin theta. So, this is r sin theta equal to a by b. So, a a cancels out and we get here r sin theta on this side this goes and this is b sin e. Similarly, what we can see here uh, this quantity is known to us from this place to this place this is nothing but a cos e and also this distance is known to us which we have written as a e. Okay. So, f n this quantity also this becomes equal to a cos 
E minus A. So, F n this is nothing but R cos theta theta this will be equal to A cos E minus A A cos E minus A A times cos E minus A. So, what we can observe that this R sin theta and R cos theta they are described in terms of this eccentric anomaly here also the eccentric anomaly is appearing. Okay, so, we have been able to eliminate we will be able to describe R in terms of A, B and E that is the semi major axis and uh, uh, semi minor axis. So, uh, this we write as equation number one here, this is two, three, four and five. this is 6, this is 7 and the next step thereafter it is a logical step will be r sin square theta this implies plus r square cos square theta r square cos square theta this equal to b square sin square e plus a square cos e minus e whole square or this gives us r square. So, this is one way of writing it. So, we will continue for in the next lecture and uh, next lecture. Okay, uh, little bit of uh, the coordinates also we will write because we have done already so much. So, so I will write the coordinate. The coordinate of the point P, so P which coordinate is x and y directly we can write y equal to r sin theta and therefore, from here this is nothing but b sin e and similarly x equal to r cos theta okay r cos theta and r cos theta we have written as a times cos e minus e so we do till this extent and next time we will be uh, working further with this okay so this will number as 7 8 9 and 10 this coordinate of point P. Point. Okay, so uh, we end the lecture here uh, and next lecture will continue from this point only. Thank you very much.